Hello, everyone. Hi. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. Hi, everybody. So happy to have you. So happy to have you here. Um, if you attended our first session and are coming back for more, um, we, we can't, so happy to have we you. Wait. Oh, sorry, you're getting feedback. Now you're learning the background of my, of, of my yeah. trip here. I just hit pause on that. Don't worry. Well, was that okay. me? <laughs> no, that was me. All right. So if you attended our first session, you will know that um, we absolutely loved um, having John on and we are looking forward to having him back again to go deeper into edu protocols. I just do want to quickly acknowledge that there um, is so much happening in the world right now. If you're attending other things, we very much understand that and we support you in doing so. And this is recorded and it will be here and available. We just know that teachers are also trying to figure out how do I do things? How do I start my year? What do I do? Um, so we are going to have this session and have it with John and welcome him. Um, but please know it will be recorded if there are other things that you need to go do um, and serve and in other places that you need to be. But we are here for you during the next hour um, and we're very much looking forward to going deeper. I saw some questions already. So maybe that's a place to start. If you watch session one and you have some follow-up questions or particular things that you want to dive into, um, when John hops on, then we will make sure that we begin there. I saw a great question already. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Selena. If I'm if I messed up on your name, please let me know. Um, and asking, loving, I would really love to see these edu protocols in action. I have the first book, but was really confused on how to put them into play. And I would like to see some real life application. And I think that in itself is the reason why um, we do these sessions. I too, just FYI, had those same questions. So I have the books um, and it wasn't until I actually tried to do it that it made the most sense to me. And some of my, um, so my, my role is twofold at my school. I teach classes, but I also help support doing professional development and we used some edu protocols even in the way that we did professional development with teachers when they were coming together and so we used iron chef in the way that they were reimagining some pieces so there are lots of pieces um to to thinking about it i think like any good lesson you learn the most when you actually do it and then you'll figure out even more questions. But for sure, there are examples that we can go through and we can show you stuff. Um, and I know John has a ton of that. So I want to defer to him first and um, uh, before diving deep on that one. But I just want you to know that many of us here have tried pieces and we would be happy to share out the way that we use them both in our own classrooms or in our schools or in our districts. Um, what about you, Stacey? Yeah, well, uh, I was going to say last week we had two people um, uh, luckily win the books. And so um, um, I wonder if they're, if, they, if you're in the chat this week and you won a book last week, tell us what you think and, and have you div dived into it yet? <laughs> so, you know, I wore my Google shirt today and you guys aren't wearing Google shirts. So I that yeah, I are, you guys, are you guys panicked at all yet? No. You know what, John? <laughs> you would be so proud. I feel like I was pretty, I was very go with the flow. I love uh, it. Yeah, I, look at me. Our counseling that. sessions are paying off. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, we, but the only thing, just a little catch up in the three minutes was um, we had a great question that I think really is a good start. And Oh, look at you, Selena, you are on fire. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just put her question back up and say thank you so much for asking great stuff. Um, so she asked at first, she asked about actually seeing some of the things in play because she has the book, but she's wondering about real life application. And then she followed that up with a second question right here which was she did PD online and learned how to use the Okay, book a kucha. I wanted yep. to. Okay, it's there a, we go. It's a play on pecha kucha. Yes. Right? So the pecha um, kucha just had yeah. A book. So so um so I love that. So she was like hitting on, and I think that's what a lot of people. I've received some follow up questions, not just Selena, but um that others who are saying like I get it, some of it makes sense, but how can I then see it in action to understand it even better? And one of the things mm -hmm. I was saying was. I think you understand it the most once you actually try it and then you develop your own right. questions like any good teaching. Mm -hmm. But 
-hmm. But I, I think that that's what people are yearning for from you is to hear some exemplars. And I don't know, yeah. can we be the students today, John? And maybe- Oh, yes, um, oh yes. I love this plan. Do you guys know how to share your screen? Okay. Yeah, us two are you. Oh no, you're going to be doing the work. So make a slide. <laughs> make a slide. Oh. Okay. Let's get a blank slide going, and then can, I'm going to. Can oh, Steph oh, Howell make it and share it with me? Because I know that that will work. Better. Oh, you can combo. That's totally fine. You can combo. Okay. Yes. Give me one. So I, um, I know she's already making it. That's why I just said that. <laughs> Mike so is being super slow to load, so I think sharing is a good idea. Is uh, is book is book a kucha where you want to start? Sure. Okay. Or do you want to do a thin slide just to get your, Ooh, get your vibe yeah, on? Let's do, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's do, do that. a workout first. A little stretch. <laughs> I'm glad I have a 27-inch monitor here. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll also okay. create a blank slide with me. Yep. So, and this is great. People can watch along. And then so I'm going to share my screen real quick. I've started making these little recipe cards. And these are, this is going to be like I've tweeted them a little but I want to show you guys the big picture first. Because just trying to be a good designer, I'm trying to think of what it is the recipient needs, right? And so a lot of teachers, they understand the excitement, but they don't understand what it is, which is like, I'm a fan of brownies, but does that mean I can cook them, right? <laughs> Slightly different. So I'm going to share screen real quick, and I would love feedback on this. Uh, so here we go, sh screen sharing. And I'm going to share this window right here. This is the window. And I'm going to share it. So this is the recipe for a thin slide. Okay, you're each going to get one word. You're each going to get one image, and you're each going to get one slide. And uh, you're each going to get three minutes. And part of the logic here is I want the students to make something, to make a learning artifact, and then comment, make a claim or observation in only three minutes. You're each going to get four seconds to share. And um, you're going to make a claim or an observation. Okay. So you guys ready to start here in a second? I'll turn my screen sharing yeah, off. I am. Yeah. Steph, did you share it with me? No, my computer's being super slow. I just now got it to share. I hope this doesn't count on my three minutes, John. No, that's <laughs> no. It, it doesn't start till I say go. So we're still in okay. the in the. Uh, we're still I'm chopping the vegetables. We're not actually cooking yet. We're just doing mise en place. She, we're just she is very vegetables. competitive. We're all going to learn in this stuff. We're all oh, going to. Okay. So. So. I'm the opposite of competitive, so I'm sharing my slide with you guys too, just so if you want to play with one. Oh, okay. I'm I just want to add a slide to either of yours. Can I just put mine below somebody? And so for Selena, we're going to do this, and this okay. is part of the protocol mindset. We're going to do this to get warmed up to be good at Bukakucha because they, they dovetail. Okay. So like um, do you like the little recipe card concept? This is I the do. essence. Where do we this get is those? The essence. Uh, they're on my Google yeah. slides. I'll share them with you guys when we're done. So cool. this is the essence. It's not all the nuances, which is another important word, right? Um, there's little things you can do to wreck the, the, the essence. But the, the gist is one word, one phrase, one image, one slide. You're going to get three minutes to build. Let me know when you all have a blank slide. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you're going to take turn screen sharing real quickly when we're done, but we're not done. And uh, I will tell you what the challenge is in just a second. How many words, super competitive Stephanie Rothstein? How many One. pictures, ultra crazy con competitive Stephanie Howell? One, but I might and, and how much time over jumping the gun, Stacey Klein? Ooh, ooh, I know, that's my best kidding. <laughs> Portia, <laughs> three minutes. So now, and this is the key. I'm not trying to rush you. You'll get better as we have repetitions. But this is the flip side of, and people that missed our show last week, if you give a kid three weeks to do a PowerPoint, what are the odds they've done nothing <laughs> until the last day? So if you're not going to do anything till the last day, let's just pretend it's the last day right now. There's a like certain it. health to that. Like, let's just give me whatever you got, your sloppy copy, and we'll take it from there. Next subtlety. I always start a protocol with something silly. I don't need you guys to Google the concept that I want you to work on. I'm lowering your cognitive load, right? Dual learning theory, dual coding. 
I don't want you to be thinking, how, what is the thing? At the same time, mm. I'm trying to build a slide about what is the thing. So, and this is another subtlety that I've got from working with middle school kids. I am not going to say this. I'm not going to say, share your favorite food. Don't, so don't start on me now, Stephanie's. I'm not going to say that because here's what teenagers do. I don't like any food. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you to do right now is advocate for one food that people should like or people should revile. One food people should like or revile. Stephanie Howell, the clock is starting. Three oh, minutes. Oh. This is a hard clock. One food people should like or revile. You only need one picture and one word, you guys. You want to use, do you want to use word art? No problem. If you want to embellish it, no That's problem. Fancy. That's fancy. Now, while you guys are fully tasked and heavily cognitive loaded, the people that are listening right here, the people that are listening, here's what's happening. They're looking at Google Images for a various word. They're doing most of the lift. Stephanie's working with her kid. It's yeah, awesome. I'm working with a child in the background. Yeah, sorry. What I do with what I do with um, what I do with this in class is parallel or complementary angles or reverse osmosis or um, slip strike faults in earthquakes or the ring of fire. I'm going to give kids one vocabulary concept, and 35 kids are going to bring me an image and tell me something about it. Ways I like to start this process are your favorite musical artist, a food you like or don't like. Um, uh, best sports uh, hero of all time or non-sports hero if you don't like the sports. So very, very wide open on that. And I'm watching the chat if people want to pop questions in because you guys are cognitively loaded and I'm doing what I do in class. I'm waiting for the play. kids to do their work. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Stacy, if you're overthinking it, just grab a common food people would like or not like. Oh, no. I, I, okay. I think I've won. I'm, I'm sorry, but okay. Rob, is competitive now. Thank you. Robin Tell Larrabee. Me. I'm still not. Yeah. I, can't, I can't worry about Steph Powell. It's okay. I'm fine. A minute, a minute 31. Not a good one. <laughs> Robin Larrabee has two great questions. Does it have to be vocab or can it be concept-based? It can certainly be concept-based. Certainly. But I start with vocab until the kids are good at the game, if that makes sense. I love nothing better on this than to see a range of the elephant um, habitat. Like, I know what an elephant looks like. I don't need an elephant. I want to see deeper. Like, I would tell kids, please don't put a picture of a volcano. I know what they look like, okay? I want like a cutaway of a volcano. I want the ring of fire. Go a little deeper. And then the next piece is, uh, Robin says, can the image be a video? Usually I don't go video because remember the kids have four seconds to explain, but Robin, animated GIF could be magical. So animated GIFs are a great option. I wouldn't say no to video, but remember the goal on this is to have all 30 kids pre build and present in about five minutes. And if you get one five minute video, it's going to really kind of wreck the whole flow. And uh, yeah, could it be used? <laughs> Darren White wants to know, could we use this to explain universal time code to Stephanie? Uh, eight? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Darren. But There's you know Stephanie. what? If Stephanie heard what it was 34 times, that might drive the coffin. Yeah, that or start, be a, be a random error where you have to ride your bike yeah. all over the planet. You definitely learn universal yeah. time really quickly. And now, a bid, a bid to your point, I'm a long-time video teacher, so I've been using GIFs for a long time, and I also call them GIFs at random. So I pick both teams. And guess what that is? No, I'm not done. You know, yes, you are. You're going to present with what you have. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and I'm right after your slide. Okay. okay. Who wants to go first? Remember, from the time you say go, you get four seconds to explain your logic or make a claim. Am I up? Yeah, who's sure. ever sharing their screen? Um, so mine's Vegemite, and it is in honor of Leslie. And <laughs> she loves Vegemite, so I think everybody should love Vegemite. This is my hero. Okay, boom, one claim. Okay, if anybody doesn't know what Vegemite is, here we go. Next it's one. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mine's mustard. I hate mustard. I'm sorry. There are so many people. My husband will kill me, but I hate mustard. I hate the taste. I hate the smell. Please don't put it on anything I eat. Thank you. Okay, boom. Yay. And I'm ready. Mine is durian. Uh, durian fruit, if you haven't tasted it, is incredible. Let me get my Southeast Asian peeps out there. 
Um, it is, it's tangy, it's unctuous, it's it's amazing. And I have a Wikipedia quote. <laughs> I am coming up on 56 years and I've never even heard of that. This is awesome. Oh, this is it's, awesome. it's stanky though. You gotta be ready yeah. for a very okay. stinky. All right, yummy. now I usually play the song from the movie Car Wash. Um, you guys, do you know this song? I do. Okay, so I'm gonna try to bring it up on my phone here. Hold on, let me see if I can do this. Songs. Search. There we go. Car wash. Hopefully it's loaded on my phone. Car wash. There it is. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I'm already singing it exactly in my head. This is it. Are you what I do with the human kids? Here we go. I got to turn off my Bluetooth. Here we go. Oh, that's the yellow. That's not even close. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for the song in the chat, let us know what food you picked. Oh, good idea. Yeah, good one. one. It's almost like I don't know how to run iTunes. Yeah, somebody on. asked. Yeah, okay. I, all forms of mustard are on my who list. I'm yeah, sorry. so even like sweet hot mustard, which doesn't taste like mustard at all. <laughs> zero, zero. I'm pretty open to most things, although I'm a veggie. So, you know, I'm weird. It's all good. I've been one forever. So. Okay, I'm, try I'm trying to see what foods. Let's see. I know there's no one talking. Come on, guys. Did I'm you like, know what we're to Oh, but we have people singing. I like it. Robin. My, Robin. My, Rob, my you know, I, I'm singing it too, Robin. Now, here's the point of this activity. Eight minutes ago, we weren't talking about durian or mustard. The same thing will happen when I have kids do this activity. One mm -hmm. time I did it with a group of kids that I'd never even met, and I said, pick your favorite artist. Now, I, there was a girl in that class who had a kind of a speech impediment that was very obvious. And you know, it was one of the most amazing things I've ever done as a teacher. I listened to her sing her favorite artist. That's yeah. awesome. I love and that. I didn't ask her to do that, but she felt comfortable in the pedagogy, right? And so she had a little bit of something when she spoke. And she said, my favorite artist is Shawn Mendes and sung like three bars of him. And the class is like, woo, yeah, all right. That's it, the it, kind of collaboration I want. John, it's funny so, you bring that up because I have a lisp and I learned it very young because I didn't have front teeth. I have no lisp in French, Spanish, or German, the language Isn't I study. Isn't that weird? Context, because right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I tend to be uh, either a stutterer or I say things backwards. And I've just, I've worked past it by working on my presenting skills. Okay. So the reason I was going to play the car wash song, because there's somebody out there who's going, okay, but Robin said we should about? sing it. Oh, uh, we're not we're singing anything. We're the car wash. Car wash. Yeah. There you go. Preview of later. All right. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. So the reason we play that song is keep the same slide, leave your name, clean it up, clean up your slide, wipe out your stuff. Ready? Here we go. Next one. Next word. Let's oh, do. Going back. Okay. Let's Got do. Um, and I'm just going super rando here. Mayan sun calendar. M-A-Y-A-N. Mayan sun calendar. And uh, my Google people at the top, look at the little bubbles up there. Mm -hmm. See the little bubbles? Nobody's noticed the little bubbles. When you do a Google image search, I've seen nobody talk about these. Yeah, yeah. Mayan sun, see the little bubbles? They they form no, a more specific frame. search. There we go. Ancient, modern, 12-month, template, kid, 365 day. Nobody looks at the bubbles. They're those super cool bubbles. Guess what happens? Uh, whose screen is that real quick? Whose screen is being shared right now? Yours. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. Right, so watch this. If I put it in parallel, I thought that was one of you guys. So if I put it in parallel, watch what happens right here. What's that say? Real life. Yeah, awesome. So if our lesson was parallel, look what I have the kids do. Look at all these options for parallel in real life. Okay, and if you type in... Um, a uh, complimentary angle. You're going to get the same thing right here. Where is it? Ready? Real life. Gotcha. So now kids can share examples. Why have I never used this? That's what I said. It's the biggest thing nobody's ever noticed. Uh, it's yeah. for math. The idea of, um, of sharing, um, of sharing your, uh, your uh, real life exemplars of math terms is crazy good money. All right, so here we go. Mayan sun calendar. 
Now, if you notice, the pictures are almost all the same. So your job now is to is to create some different looks. Great. Repeat the prompt for me, John. I am Sun Calendar. No, I got that part. Then you said something after one, one picture, one word. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Did the time start? Yep. No. Mm -hmm. You have 14 seconds left. I'm kidding. I am kidding. That was, kidding. that was just mean. Yeah, two minutes. Sarah Kiefer, excellent point. You can search by transparent when you need those images without the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. That's the number one reason to use the bubbles. So you're totally right on. Although some of those websites are that share that are kind of wonky. So it doesn't always work, but it helps. It's a, it's a filter. And I'm putting labeled for non-commercial reuse. Yes, mm -hmm. in my slides. And then you're going to have four seconds to share one thing, one thing you've noticed or a claim you'd like to make. And remove.bg is good, although they've gotten pickier about how many reps you can use. But when you need just one, it's great. I don't have a time for if that. Yeah, if you're a Mac user, if you have a Macintosh, the preview app has a thing called a magic lasso that'll allow you to do that on the fly, too. And then in Keynote, there's a thing called Instant Alpha, and Instant Alpha will wipe out the background as well. And we are at one minute and seven seconds for my creative team right now. Stress is rising. The global, the global Gleg interview team may be as quiet as ever right now because they are cognitively loaded. <laughs> They're totally loaded. And so we won't do a lot of we won't do a lot of hands on today. I want to do some other stuff, but this I just want to show people what the flow looks like. Does that make sense? This is wonderful. And you could literally do things like give me an array of forty. You could say give me a, let me see Gettysburg Battlefield Modern. Let me see. And here's the other kick as you guys are going. This is the real kick for the listeners. I don't do this as a culminating activity. This is the anticipatory set. Let them go explore. If anybody's heard of a KWL activity, this is a KWL activity, except I'm not making kids count on their human brains to learn. I'm letting them, I know I write, whoever said I'm seeing serious face, they're totally right. Um, Luis Pertez, I like seeing Stephanie at work. Look at that serious face. Oh, it's Stephanie. <laughs> okay, time's up. Time's up. Get ready to share. But this is the anticipatory set so that when kids leave my class to go to the next class, they're like, did you see that durian thing? That was crazy. I want them to apply that to other academic content. Stacy, well. did you not finish? Yes, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <did you> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Boy, Shazam. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's do this. Stacy, Mayan sun calendar. Am I sharing my screen? So much. Look You're sharing your screen. You're doing the same thing I did. Four seconds, Stacy. Claim or okay. observation. Sorry about that. Um, so my Sun calendar, I took I took I found an image on uh, Wikimedia in the Wiki Commons. And um I was an anthropology major in college, so this is like Shazam exciting. Um it's also really relevant to like celestial navigation when we go sailing. Um so it, to me it what I learned is is what century fifth BC um, before the common era and also um, just how it's used throughout um, Mesoamerica and um, uh, Aztec culture. Four seconds, not four minutes, sister. Let the OCD Sorry. go a little. Sorry. <laughs> but I love her engagement, right? So I didn't know <laughs> Stacey was this arts cultural history person. So now the whole class is like, ooh, get with her to study because she's going to do good on the test. Okay. One of two Stephanie's, my and son calendar. I see an arrow and that makes me interested. Yeah, so I was trying to get three arrows because I was reading on Google because I knew nothing about the Maya Sun calendar. I probably should since I struggle so much with time zones, it might help me. <laughs> um, but I was gonna use these arrows because it repeats. So there's like three calendars in here. So it's like it's like one of those triple circle things. Mm -hmm. But then I ran out of time and I didn't cheat like Stacy did. <laughs> Yes, yes. Are you too long. Sorry, and, <laughs> and, and, and part of my Mayan sun calendars do work in UTC, so that's another big benefit. Okay, <laughs> Rothstein, let's go. Okay, so mine was just actually more of a. Uh, it, it made me recall a memory that um, when I was traveling in Mexico, I went by myself for three weeks all around Mexico, and 
specifically it reminded me I saw Oaxaca in there when um, when I was looking up history of the Mayan calendar and it reminded me of my time in Oaxaca. Boom. So imagine 30 kids kicking out this variety of details. We've got a lot of variety in three people, right? And I had one third of the group say, I had no idea what this was. So now the group knowledge base is a lot bigger so that when I go to lecture about it or instruct whatever phrasing you want to use, they're going to be like, yeah, Stacy Klein said, this is cool. I'm going to listen. Right? So there's this personification right out of the gate. And that's super powerful. So that is the basis for Book Akucha. It's the same basic idea. So here's what I want you to Robin had a really good point too. Stace used the explore tool. And I'm thinking, unless I yeah. was too dived in, but yeah. Now, a couple of variations before we jump to Book of Kucha. As kids get faster, because I suspect my class of three is going to get really fast at this, I can do a couple of things. I can say one word, one picture, one minute. So I can raise the difficulty. Or I can do this for the overachievers. Three words, three pictures, three minutes. And I've seen teachers do that with fourth graders. Give us, we, we just worked with explorers. Give me one explorer and three facts. Exit quiz. Guys, what's my planning time? Zero. And I can deliver exactly what the kids need. What's my grading time? Mm. I'm not grading this tonight. You're mm -hmm. doing it all right, all right now. now. Doing right there. Feedback. Yeah. All right there. And I all want right. everybody to know yes. that John had no idea we were going to make him do this. <laughs> so he, it on the he is zero prep time. He is just yeah. doing this off I'm the literally, top of the head. like if you've ever gone to the captain's table and watched the chef cook, I'm doing it in real time. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, imagine that I'm playing the, the car wash song because I'm a complete loser and can't get it to play. <laughs> Look at the car wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best movie of 1974, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so now what you're going to do is use your same slide. We're going to change. The game is similar yet different. So now we're going to do Book of Kucha. Now here's how I start Book of Kucha. You're only going to have three minutes. You won't have time to research, and I don't know what book you're reading. So here's what we're going to modify it to. We're going to go to the category of pop culture. And I'm getting to know Stacy pretty well right now. She's probably going to say, I don't know any pop culture, because that's Stacey's an outlier like that. So mm -hmm. take a TV show or a movie, take a TV show or a movie, take a TV show or a movie that you might have heard of. It looks like Stephanie's going to need accommodation. If you actually know a book, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> take a media item. Can that be broad enough? All right. A book, a movie, a documentary. Okay. And you're going to put two things on your slide. One is the cover. So the movie cover the movie poster, the book cover. So that's one item. Second item, antagonist. That's all you get today. And be prepared to give me three facts about the antagonist. So pick a movie. Like, I'll just go with an easy one. You, I'm just knowing this crowd, you're probably not going to do Tiger King. So if you- <laughs> I would have, but it's fine. I'll go okay. through. So Tiger King, I would have the, the movie poster or the Netflix poster. And then I would have a picture of Joe. And I'd be prepared to give three attributes. And that's a book of Kucha in essence. You know, there's nothing that makes you learn your Google Docs faster than having to do it live on YouTube. I mean, like instantly, whoa, this menu's here. <laughs> Once you get fast, it really flows. And Abid is, I'm making up with Abid on my soft G with my Tiger King. So I'm doing my best here. <laughs> Can you restate that, John, one more time for the book of Kucha? Book or movie cover. Mm -hmm. Right in the chat. Antagonist. Carol Baskin. Book or movie <laughs> cover. Antagonist. And then be able to verbally tell us three things about the antagonist. So think of this. Why I know you guys are tasking. I'm loving the faces, by the way. I can tell you're actually working. Um, think of this as think of this as a flash lit circle. Remember our earlier concept. Why would I let the kids wait until Friday to slap their lit circle together on the bus if I can do this twice a day all week long? So this is the concept of Boca Kucha. I also move it across the continuum. I could do this, something ironic in the book you're reading, something, uh, give me an example, foreshadowing, uh, give me alliteration, give me uh, two key quotes that personify your character. I can do anything I want with literature in this framework. 
And so if you've heard of book talks, book talks are great, but I've seen teachers that have kids color their book talk poster for two weeks. I don't got time for that. Grab some images, get going. Tell me what you found. And Robin Larrabee, yes and no, or better yet, hashtag it depends. So uh, what Marlena visualized is kids, three kids working in one slide deck. So they're working in trifectas. You could also put them in one giant deck. That's fine. Or you could also have them go in separate decks. Here's the determining factor. I don't want my kids to walk to the front of the room to present. I want them to present wherever they're at. So if they send me one slide each, that's going to take me a while to look through, like Stacy pointed out in my um, shared with me. I can do it, but it won't be super fast. If I had 30 kids and they were in trifectas of three, that's only 10 groups instead of 30. So I'm making the pile smaller. So again, it depends. The other thing that's a cool model is let all the Stephanie Howells build whatever they want. And at the last second, they paste their finished work into the monster deck. And then we just whip it around the class. Another fair, fun variation is the table groups can talk amongst each other and send one of the best. So they might say, we talked, John, Stacy, Stephanie all talked. We want to look at Howells on the big screen. So you can do that kind of crowdsourcing model. But remember, the key to this is immediate feedback. If my kids are not getting a concept, I'm going to know right now. Uh, one of my other favorite variations with this, because I was blanking a little bit earlier, is six types of conflict. And if you teach language arts, you will uh, you will probably agree with me. Most of your publisher curriculums say things like, what's the main conflict? That is not going to get it done. I need to know person versus person. I need to know person versus society. I need to know person versus nature. So I'll ask the kids, what's your book? Three types of conflict. Go. And so they'll if they're reading The Bear, Got character versus character, the boy versus the bear, character versus nature, the boy versus the whole environment, character versus society, the boy uh, got left behind by his parents. Boom. If kids can do that in three minutes, you guys, they're going to be fine. And one of my favorite things is when kids get home, they start doing this at home. And moms and dads start calling me going, Crippo, you ruined movie night. And I go, what, <laughs> what do you mean? And they go, they should just sit there and eat the popcorn. But now I got to hear Roger Ebert next to me the whole movie. <laughs> and I personally love that. John, what was your extension on this activity? We had three adjectives and then what was the extension? Um, on which, on thin slides on, or on Book of Coochie? No, on the Book of Coochie. You said like three, and then if you well, got that. I would say three attributes about the protagonist, three attributes about the antagonist. Um, name one archetype. Like I can take this to AP. I can take mm -hmm. this to AP all day. Oh, and, all right. And if it's I got okay it, that I've only done task one, though, right? I mean, I feel really good about it. No, it's okay. Oh, I didn't know how to do all that, Stacey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Need two pictures. Right. The total workload is two pictures. But imagine this. Imagine this. Whatever, whatever book you're reading, identify a character and relate them to an archetype and also relate them to a Disney character. Oh, so I could literally say that... Uh, that uh, Carol Baskin was Scar to Joe, uh, to exotic, like Joe Exotic. I like Boom, that's massive. But if kids can relate that quickly, I like that agility. Okay, it's time to share those slides, people. Good, bad, okay. or other. Another okay. piece you guys are experiencing in, in real life is this is iterative. And so I'm going to tell you guys right now, until people see it, they, 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 they're kind of freaking out. Once they see it, Kids go, oh, I get it now. So let's go. Harry Potter. Whose is that? Oh, that's me. That's no. me. Are we on my side? Okay. Yeah. That's me. Unless, oh yeah, that's mine. All right. So Harry Potter is the book. <clears throat> I don't I don't know if I want to say his name. If you really read the books, oh. then you understand me, but that's fine. Lord, Lord. In there. Super okay. sneaky. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, he was a self-hating bully. He was a Slytherin and Dumbledore was the only wizard that um, he was ever afraid of. And shut her down. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Other Stephanie. All right. So I did Aladdin and then Jasper was my antagonist and he almost killed Aladdin by drowning him. He stole the genie right from Aladdin. And then he was also hypnotizing. Now I'm going to pause this for just a second. Here's what's going to happen in your class. You like Harry Potter. I didn't know that. I like Harry Potter. Affinity groups start forming. 
That's an SEL thing. I've seen this at high school level. You you like Star Wars? I like Star Wars. The one kid's a skater, the other kid's an Aggie. They now have something in common. So this there's a lot of underpinnings that are super powerful for the state. Yeah, the one that comes out all the time in my classes is if somebody says Doctor Who, then you know like Ooh, yeah. Who are your who are your sci-fi? Like I love you, my like nerdy sci-fi people, because I'm with you. And then you like have a crew in that room. Yep. Yeah, who okay. do walk. I appreciate you, Luis. Okay. See, and now you just lit up our chat again. Stop it. Uh Stacey Klein, what do you got? Um, I just we've Still been, been we've been oh sorry, screen. Oh, she made a different slide. Ooh. Did you make a different slide? Sorry. Um, am I even in here now? Sorry. No, I don't think and I love what Sarah Kiefer said. This could totally be done remotely. Yes. And if there are teachers who say kids aren't coming to my Zoom sessions, you get this Doctor Who business going, kids will be showing up. And what I'm doing in that model is I'm using pop culture to build academic skills. One of, one of the favorite, most favorite accidents I ever had was uh, I got a hold of a PowerPoint that took all the archetypes and did them as Disney characters. And my sophomore English class was freaking out. They were like, I knew Rafiki would be the wizard. They were <laughs> loving it. And these are 10th grade boys, right? They're totally into it. So I had an epiphany and it's on the same wavelength. I sent them the PowerPoint, which is normally bad teacher juju. Don't give them the PowerPoint. I gave them the PowerPoint and I said, in the next half hour, we'll replace all the Disney characters with your favorite fandom. Ooh. Harry Potter, Hunger Games, whatever. Take the take the take the Disney out, put in yours. Whatever you are, put that in. Just replace the faces, not the definitions, right? And so then we did that. They all shared, they all laughed. I go, your homework tonight is to take your friends and redo yeah. theirs. So I gave Ooh. them three reps on one assignment and they were going bonkers. Okay, Stacy Klein. Okay, so so we're binge watching American Gods right now. So the good guy, Shadow Moon, and what a, he's an amazing character. Um, everything you want in a human being, or actually, I don't want to ruin it. Anyways, and then the bad guy is Mr. World, who you might remember from um, the uh, Back to the Future movies, where he was the dad. And it's like, this oh, yeah. the guy is really profound because you're he's not used creepy. to it. Yeah, he's a creepy dude. Fleshing out my slide, so not quite done, but getting there. So that's one of the things you have to let the OCD people go. Uh, no, I'm winking at you, Stacey. Um, this is not about this is not about beautiful slides. This is about slapping in there. It's about. Do you, and this is also really good for ELs. I've had multiple schools where I've gone in and done lessons like this, and the teacher will come to me and say, "My kids have never talked like that. Everybody talked because that four second window is so tiny. You can just jump in and out." If it's all going bad, only three seconds to go. <laughs> and, and if you're uh, Stephanie Rothstein, I'm saying, Stephanie, only four seconds, not four minutes. And <laughs> we can go all the way around the horn really, really quick. So, but it's- but One thing that I did with it, John, in my classes, um, that, that helped maybe for some of us that are people that are appreciative of design and it's hard to look at things sometimes, is I, I preset them up and I had a little template and it just had like the same mm -hmm. thing on each one, but it told them what to put in one spot. Yep. And so one of the things that it helped set up for me was as we moved into how to present it. And I already, I had pre places for them to click and add an image or click and put some text in and it helped show them what, like what does white space look like on, on something? What does yep. it look like to have a balanced slide? But I didn't say that yet. It just right. was like, you're just modeling to start. This is just yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't do that at the beginning. At the beginning, right. like I needed it to kind of be a hot mess, so then I could go. Would it help you to have a template? Would you all like that? No. And then they were like, "Yeah, give it to us." Sure. You are you are spot on. Except I, I have a yeah. secret weapon you may not have heard of, which is called the worst presentation ever. Yeah, I, okay. I do. I know. I know you well, and I appreciate it so, so much. Yeah. So bear in mind, my kids have already done the worst presentation mm -hmm. ever. So I've already established some of those things, right? So, and then we're going to do book a kucha like every Thursday. So after eight or nine reps, all the things you want are starting to be native. And my right. kids are used to building a slide. Have you ever watched a kid work on a slide for 45 minutes? I'm like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? I need three pictures and four facts. Get off of that slide. But in their head, they've never been modeled of the tempo. Bang, 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 front, back, transparency, 
Word art, shut her down, right? Moving on. And to Sarah Kiefer, we used to make t-shirts in our class that said, releasing your inner OCD. I don't have that shirt on right now. Um, but what we do is we put the OCD in a box. You can go as crazy as you want for the next four minutes, but then it's over. And so we're helping them to moderate that, which is go nuts, but at the end it's over. And then what the, people are going to see what you've done or not done. So your OCD needs to be balanced or you might have a lot of pictures and no words. So there's there's that other, other thing about that. And I don't want to get into CDO right now. This is only a one hour show. <laughs> So, um, so that was my book, Akucha run through. Remember, it's just a container. So I can't tell you exactly what standards you're going to cover. It depends on each in fourth grade or AP, but the game is one word or uh, sorry, two pictures, three, uh, three claims, four seconds. That's the general game. You can do it in groups of three. You can do it whole class and all those things. And it's just, it's, it's so fun because you're bumping around in the class, talking to the kids and you're going like, Stacy Klein, are we going to hear about the Mayan calendar again today in history? Like every day, Mayan calendar. I know you've seen it all. We're super excited, but you get those <laughs> conversations going. And, and that's that, that's that piece that kids, that kids love. You want to see some more templates? Yes, please. Yes. I'm going to go now to sketch and tell and sketch mm -hmm. and tell is the opposite of thin slides. Wow. Sketch and tell is the opposite. Oh, hold on. Of wait, wait. Okay, okay. So I'm, okay. A, I'm going to share screen right now. Okay, share screen. Here we go. Sketch and tell, thou shalt not use. Whoa, what happened on that? That was weird. Let me stop that again. Whoa. Got some kind of double. You and your, you and your big screen. Got some kind of, got some kind of, uh, I don't want to hear that again. Okay. All right, here we go. Application window being shared. So um, sketch and tell. I give the kids a source. Now the source could be a PowerPoint, a short video, um, or a reading. It could be anything. And they get, each get one slide, but here's the deal. No screenshots or images. Must use the Google drawing tools only. And then you explain by writing. That's awesome. So I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. One, one slide one source must use the drawing tool. So if you're looking on my screen, when I'm sharing right now, people forget about this thing right here. If you have touchscreen Chromebooks, what happens if I use the scribble tool? Finger. Yeah. I can do electrical circuits. I can make any shape I want. Right. And then if you think creatively in the shapes, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Right. And so here's some exemplars. This is Stacy young. If you guys don't know her, get to know her. She's really good. She's doing this in Pear Deck. So what she's got going on here is right here in her Pear Deck, she's got the kids reading about Shinto shrines. She's got the kids watching a quick video about Shinto shrines. And then this is what they did nine minutes later. They each drew and wrote about Shinto shrines. And that's sketch and tell. So do you see how it's a continuum? I might start the concept with this. I might start with feudal Japan. Super broad, 30 kids like, oh my God, that's where samurai come from. This is going to be awesome, right? And then I'm <laughs> drilling down into Shinto shrines, but you cannot use Google images or screenshots to explain it. By the way, this is rad for science and math. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen the FET simulations, imagine I give the kids eight minutes to play in a FET simulation, and then they have to draw what they made. And if they do a bad job, no worries. We're going to go again tomorrow. So my lesson prep for tomorrow is rad. Here's another one from Adam Moeller. And I'm going to make this one. I think this is a picture. I'm going to make this bigger. Look what his student did here. Oh, I got to move move to front. Hold on. Move to front. Move to right front. This is just explaining. Think of it like a graphic organizer. And so this is how senates and tribunes worked in ancient Rome. Do you think this kid has a pretty good grasp of what's happening? I'm going to go with yes. Okay. Wow. Now, this isn't necessarily meant to be a final quiz. It is kind of a culminating or deeper drill in some cases. Here's another good one that Adam shared with the other day, which was really cool. And I'll move it to the front too. Adam has brought realia to this. So he actually has his kids using Legos, gummy bears, and Oreos live model. This one is popular sovereignty. And the kid explained that all the gummy bears on the bottom wow. are 
are electing the gummy bear on the top. Do you think this kid understands this forever? That's awesome. Yes. That's it's so, it's and here's so the thing. Like What's the prep time? I'm thinking prototyping, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's 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 called, also called dual coding. I just learned about yeah. this Cavilio guy today. Now, somebody in the comments said um, the flash is dying and FET is mostly flash. Yeah, that's perfect because FET is mostly HTML5 now. So for you, Luis, you want to do this right here. HTML5, and here's why HTML5 is super important. It works on any device. It works on any device. And this is just for you, Stacey, Ro Stacey Rothstein, if you've never seen. Um, <laughs> have you seen FET before? We're going to do John, John Travoltage, one of my favorites as a language arts teacher. So imagine having first and second graders sketch and tell this. <laughs> John Travolta, guess what's going to happen? Wow. Oh, wow, that's cool. So imagine doing that with first graders and just letting wow. them drop in there. Just say, play the game. That's and cool. then go, time for a sketch and tell what just happened. And their job is to explain it with a drawing. So they they are getting more and more of those. But what do you want to look for uh, specifically to Luis? Don't be sad about Flash because it was a pain in the butt anyways. Look for the ones with a little five. They work on anything that moves. So that's sketch and tell. Thoughts? And John put in the chat that, that Fed is actively seeking donations as a nonprofit to convert to HTML5. Or if you're a programmer, you can help donate your time. Yeah. Okay. And they're one, they're one, getting there. I'm oh, sorry, John. One question that I think was coming up inherent in some of the other ones is as as we think about kind of the beginning or wherever you are in your school year, if you're um, all over the world, depending on that place, and if you're in remote, like, would do you imagine when you when you say include the video, do you I could see that happening in multiple ways, right? Like it could be what you're watching together in a live piece before they go to do something asynchronously. It could be what you're sending them to do, like. What do you imagine is the uh, our best practices that people how people can use it? Well, I'm glad you asked. You walked right <laughs> into my trap, so, and we we practiced none of this. Am I correct? We had literally no idea. No. You guys when had you to email on, me the on. link three minutes late because it wasn't in the invite again. But I didn't say that. I, in okay. fact, the link changed, John. I was kind of trying to figure it out too. <laughs> <laughs> so dig this. John. <laughs> this is Cyber Sandwich. This is a variation of what we just did. One source, five slides, two students, read, write, and compare. So imagine this. Both students are going to do a FET activity on laser beams or John Travoltage. Each one on their, the, remember there's five slides. Slide one is Stacy. Slide two is uh, Stephanie Howell. Make three claims based on what you just did. Slide three, they do a Venn diagram together. Now, I never say Venn diagram because when I say Venn diagram, kids freak out. I don't know why, but that's a thing. It's Connie Mimura's class calls it the cheesy slide because mm -hmm. it's in the middle. So what that. happens is you both do an activity. You could watch a PowerPoint, watch a video, any grade level, do a thing, and then make three claims or observations. Then on slide three, you now can talk to each other. The two of you can go back and forth. Did you notice this? Did you notice that? Why are they minuses? I don't know. So you can have that conversation. Then I put my Gandalf hat on and the Socratic seminar happens. Because up until now, I'm not helping. Now they've got a Venn diagram. And I usually give the kids a scaffolded set of questions. So they, I have three categories. One is Bazinga. What's the big idea? Mm. Two is Wall of Facts. Three or four facts that aren't big, but they're facts. And then the last one is, you know, the meme of the little girl that looks like this <laughs> the GIF? and she's confused. So I literally put that one in there and that's for the third group, which is, I don't know what happened. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you what I do know. So now I do a Socratic seminar. Each group shares, no popsicle sticks, no poker chips. We all share. And then they write a paragraph about what they learned today. Cyber sandwich. Wow. So let me show you one of those that was done this week by uh, Melissa Hero. Oh, and by the way, here's a fun little fact for you from my friend Scott. Number Mania, Iron Chef, Cyber Sandwich are a trifecta of highly effective strategies that can improve your teaching by remixing and rep and repetition. 
the effect size, if you guys aren't super heady geeks, the effect size of 0.8 is two years of growth. Wow. So doing these types of activities are what going to spur that growth. So here's what Melissa Hero made. She's one of my favorite NGSS teachers up. I think she's in Redwood City in the Bay Area. This is a Nearpod I'm slide deck. You can hear me. She's yep. Me. She's awesome. So Melissa made these after I explained the cyber sandwich to her. This is in Nearpod, though. Think blended learning. So the first thing that she does is she sews them in Nearpod. You can take notes that go from slide to slide. So the first instruction is click this open and be ready to take some notes. Next, to your question, Stephanie Rothstein, she has a video all queued up, but they all play it locally. Mm -hmm. She's not streaming it. It's just a link. So she can start the video and say, guys, are going to watch a, a, a video about how we're losing seabirds. After that, she says this. We're going to read an article on the next slide. Here are the questions I want you to answer from the article. Hint, put those in your notes. Next, here's the article. The kids gather some facts. This is high school, just so people know. Next thing is, guess what? Collaborate board. And on the collaborate board, what I do is I say, give me your best fact. When you scan through all your notes, what's your number one best fact? And give me a picture that exemplifies your fact. Because in Nearpod, on a collaborate board, the kids can put a, a sentences and animated GIFs or pictures. So then this is where it gets really fun. It's kind of like a Padlet. I can then sort by number of likes. And then I can say, grab a couple of those facts and drop them into your notes. Because guess what we're going to do right now? Sketch and tell. You're going <laughs> to draw your picture and add your paragraph. And wow. dude, what's my prep for tomorrow? Zero. <laughs> Big zero. I need another video and another link. I'm yeah. good. All of this data is going to stream into a single report in my Nearpod account. So that's Cyber Sandwich. And, and I think that's a super, super powerful option. Hats off to Marlena Heburn for creating that, my co-author. Awesome. Um, Although I did name it. She she called it like, you know, double up digital or something like that. I was like, nobody likes that. Let's just call it cyber sandwich. And the idea <laughs> is two people working on one subject. See, it's a Love sandwich. That. So, and we try to name all the protocols something that when I say it, the kids won't freak out. Like when you say, let's do a, a Venn diagram and your whole class goes, not again. I want kids to see this thing and go, ooh, I love these. Because what we're trying to do is reduce the cognitive load. They know what the task is. I'm just changing the content. So it's a double win because cyber sandwiches only take five minutes for me to build and the kids already know what to do. So they talk more about the content. And then the last one, I'm going to go super yeah. geeky now, super crazy geeky. This is number mania. Have you guys seen number mania yet? You mentioned it last time, and I know we had some questions. So I think, so please. Here, yeah. Here's the number main language on, in, um, on infographic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, here's the thing. If I said to most teachers, I want your kids to do an infographic, what percent of teachers are going to do that as an ending activity? Most. Like 100. <laughs> how about we go above 80? Right. Next. How long will they set aside to produce said infographic? Mm. Probably too long, but um, throw me number of classes, number of days. Five. I was going to say three, but okay. Mm -hmm. What if I showed you that I could have kids do this in one period? Awesome. Yeah. Now that's actually that's actually two of them. There's the Battle of Stalingrad and then the French Revolution. So, but those were both done in one period. Oh, by the way, as the starting activity. Yeah. This is not a culminating activity. This is the anticipatory set, you guys. You've like made NGSS for all lesson plans, John. It's like, yeah. this is the, this is the phenomenon. And then you well, move on. Yeah. It's, and it's very five E's. I don't mm -hmm. explain to the kids. The kids explain to me. <laughs> I don't evaluate the the facts. The kids evaluate the facts. So that's, so here's the simple, super simple recipe. I'm going to help decode this. So I'm going to make what's called a Google form. Do you guys know how to make them? I think so. Okay. I think we but do. if you don't, there's a level one boot camp. There's a level one boot camp coming up. Okay, I so starting. on the Google form, it says your name, Stephanie Hell, your fact, December 7th, 1941, and your, and, and uh, uh, sorry, your, your number, 1941, and your fact, Pearl Harbor attacked. Stephanie Rothstein is doing the same Google form. Her, same, her name, her says, Stephanie Rothstein, uh, mm -hmm. 348, 
Japanese planes. Mm. Stacy Klein says, Stacy Klein, 1118 men died when the USS Arizona was blown up. I can get 35 facts in under four minutes because each kid's doing how many facts? One. Fantastic. Under and five minutes. CD on it. You know, the kids can just go, I just need one. <laughs> now, <laughs> that all gets dumped to a spread share, uh, a, a shared, I said a spread, a shared spreadsheet, but it's view only because I don't want Stacy messing with Stephanie's facts. We know how that'll go. And so now there's 35 facts on there. Each one of you makes how many slides? One. And then you have an infographic with five or six numbers. I've had seventh graders do this on the first try that were not even my kids in under 30 minutes. Wow. Wow. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with the add-on called the Noun Project? Yes. Now, there's a different one Marlena shared with me called Flat Icon. Flat mm -hmm. Icon super I cool. I love that one. I use it all the time. Because Flat Icon doesn't need a sign-in. Yes. I love the noun project, but it needs a sign in, which if with the kids under fifth grade can just be a disaster with high school kids. It's fine. I so have this on my school account and I use it all the time. So here comes the dirty trick part as the super teacher. Let's say we were doing on the, uh, doing one of these on the American revolution, the revolutionary war. What I'm going to do is in this gray area here Ooh. outside of the slide itself, I'm going to pre-doc a bunch of graphics that the students might need. And all they're going to have to do is what? Oh, Drag them. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's fancy, John. That's a pure, pure speed burn right there. Shout out I to Megan that. Cannon. Shout out to Megan Cannon for that one. Because Using I saw the her green space, that has never been in my head. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's really cool. So Megan Cannon was the first person I, I've seen do this. I know other people did it before her, but what she does with her littles, with her second graders is, she gives them an unlimited supply of play money up in this outside oh. white space. And mm -hmm. she does this, make a dollar forty nine go. Oh, that's so awesome. cool. Make a dollar forty seven go. Make a dollar fifty three go, and they're just dragging them in, dragging them in, dragging them in, and then she That's teaches really them how cool. to duplicate. Which everybody on this show should know uh, should know copy paste, but watch this: duplicate, speed burner, oh, Apple, I love D. Apple D, duplicate. If you yeah. need a lot of things, you can use it for the whole slide too. Oh my god! So what I'm going to do is I'm using a military term. I'm going to pre-position the graphics they need in the white space. Mm. And I don't need them Googling all those images. So look very carefully at these two I just sent you. On the one, they didn't use numbers at all. I mean, uh, pictures hardly at all. Mm -hmm. The numbers were the fact, right? Mm. On the other side, I want to draw your attention to something that's really cool. If you look right here, let me drop in a little handy arrow, of which I should pick arrows. Look mm. what they did right here. Look what they did right here. 10% of land owned by the first estate. They're using a battery level as a visual mm -hmm. to explain how much. Wait, there's more. There are no noun projects that look like what's happening right there with the wheat. I mean, the corn and the house. That kid is combining those. And look down here. Right here. That's probably three noun project icons put together. That's to a total remix. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a tableau right there that yeah, that kid that. has created. And again, one period. What are the odds that this kid is going to forget this? Pretty zero. In fact, they might even have a dream about it this weekend, which starts to get weird. But that <laughs> could happen. And then this slide was from my friend Scott Petri, who's down at uh, LA Magnet uh, High School for medical. And he threw this in. The jigsaw method method is number seven on Hattie's list out of 256. Wow. And it has a, a, a net effect of 1.2, which is a year and a half of growth or academic potential when you teach this way. And here's my favorite part, you guys. What's my planning time to build this? I can literally use the same Google form every day. Every day I can use the same Google form. I might have to change the spreadsheet. Right? Yeah. 
And I might have to pre-position pictures, but I guarantee if you teach fourth grade up, that trick only works about four times. And then the kids tell you to knock it off because they want to do it themselves. But I want a quick start, right? I want a quick start. So I have one question, John, that I think. Oh, you have way more than one question. I, I have, one, I have one, this. one on this. One on this. <laughs> so, so let's say I, I'm just going to, I'm going to help like I'm going to envelop a persona here because it's not my thought, but let's yeah. say I'm doing this and then I'm nervous about us actually getting to some of the other pieces of content that maybe they haven't naturally picked up or they didn't go out and seek and find. So if a teacher gets nervous about that, you know, what would be the methodology? How would you infuse some of those pieces and make sure that we get there? Um, as yeah. you that's that's where the weave comes in in protocols because I'm doing key vocabulary in Fast and Curious. I'm exploring new concepts in Thin Slides. I'm ramming home conceptual things in Number Mania. We might be doing a mini report. So that's just me being the jaw, the boss and going, where are the holes? Oh my God, we haven't got to the Mayan Sun can, uh, calendar yet. And if I don't do that, Stacy Klein's going to have a freak out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so that is just being a master teacher and knowing your content, but you can literally open up your textbook and go, Oh, we need to do Magna Carta and we need to do uh, Richard the great. And we need to talk about the crusades. I'm just correlating what's happening in my class to what's happening in my textbook. And we even say that in the edge protocols field guide, continue to use your textbook edition as a guideline. Do not use it as a lesson planner. That's not cool. And why do I have new kids on the block? I could do number mania on this on a hot second. Stop okay. it. You know, I've been to their concert multiple times, right. John. And so look, <laughs> how many weeks on the chart? 132. Let's try it again. Number eight. And so you just teach kids to start finding facts. I'm going to say that's a pretty good skill. Oh, look at this. April 92, McPherson dropped their suit and they said new kids did sing the lead vocals. So those are kind of the facts that will be popping up in less than five minutes with your kids. And I think that is authentic learning and that's an authentic learning process. And the reason I showed new kids on the block is not because you're fans or potential fans is I'm going to start with pop culture. I'm going to start with Colonel Sanders. If you're a history teacher, Colonel Sanders has a rad history. And I'm going to have the kids pop in there and we're going to be all, all geared up on Colonel Sanders 30 minutes into the unit. Right. When, and then when they come back the next day, I'm going to go, now we're going to do Dave Thomas from Wendy's and, and then this momentum is building. So it's really, really powerful. This was amazing, John. Uh, an another, another hour of my life that I'm so happy I got to spend with you. So this was great. Wow. This is great. Yeah, I feel so like from the student side, oh my gosh, I learned so much because you know, it's crazy. And I don't know. Uh, I know Steph how like, we kind of all pride ourselves in being able to be multitaskers, but when you are really asked to deeply learn and do, you cannot be somewhere mm -hmm. else. So it was like, you have to be right. present. And that is a piece that I absolutely yeah. And if you, if you see those Facebook posts that say, professors say kids don't pay attention. Dude, they never paid attention. <laughs> they didn't have a Facebook option before. That was the difference. Now, now they have a bailout option, but I guarantee you, I sat in your science class like this. Yeah, gathering wool or doing Thinking something. Thinking about things besides you, right? Yeah. Exactly. So we're putting the kids in the work. So if people want these, there's free examples at edgeprotocols.com. And uh, we're getting ready to release the math edition over the summer. So it'll be all math all the time in this format. So awesome. Thank you so and, much, John. Thank you. Oh, and uh, uh, let me share the slides. Let me share the slides real quick. Yeah. Hold on. I got I to gotta do the share button. And again, <laughs> Thanks to Google for changing it in the middle of COVID without telling us. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll have to share this slide through the private chat, John, because I don't know. Oh, yeah. If you try to put it in there, it won't. Um, okay. we'll, we'll paste it in there for you. Well, but I'll put it in the private and you guys can chat I that. I can always use this with my teachers because right. they're going to be active learners now in my PD. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, if they're new, they're going to do a thin slide. I want to give Marlena a lot of credit for that too, is you can definitely learn content mm -hmm. through edge of protocols. And then you're getting a twofer because you're also learning a pedagogy. So if you do an iron chef on 
social emotional learning, you've avoided the whole lecture thing. And now you know how to iron chef. If you do a thin slide on the Mayan calendar, you could be as smart as Stacy. <laughs> you, you would not believe what's on my desk right now. I am kidding ah. you. <laughs> Whoa. You should have used insert image, Stacy. Well, you know, and the whole time I was saying, how do I share this with them? I'm kidding you not. Like, dumb, you're on the silly pants, you're on the TV. <laughs> so that was funny. I'm, I'm making a short link right now. I don't use this it. Like, I'm just going to say, as we're you? rotating out, I don't like, I don't like uh, Bitly. And here's why. Yeah. When I'm doing PD, if I have one capital letter, half the room goes, I can't get in. If I do no capital letters, five people go, I can't get in. Why? <laughs> it's all cap. No, it's not. It's all lowercase. I don't like that. So I use tiny URL. Ooh. And so tiny URL is not case sensitive. And guess what? I just made it right now. Yeah. It doesn't do things that Bitly does. Like it doesn't... Um, uh, it doesn't uh, track your hits and all that stuff. But when I'm leading PD, it works the first time, every time, except for the people that don't know what a backsplash, backslash is. And I just go over and help. Awesome. So tinyurl.com, gig, ed, ed up, edge of protocol. <laughs> it works Thank like a job. Yes, thank you so much, John. And just a reminder, we will be back next Friday for our boot camp. So you get ready to learn about Google Forms that John just talked about. And you might not have any idea or you might not have any idea how to use Google Slides. You will have a chance to learn all of those things. Um, but before you leave, make sure you leave us feedback so we can keep improving. And we just want to say another big thank you. Like th this was great. It was the perfect gear up. Um, and I think so many of the teachers, I mean, we received messages from people all around the world that were just so grateful and, um, and John, like super appreciative and thinking about it's the perfect place. It's where we always needed to be. But I think that we've been propelled into really thinking about how to do school and do it well and do it well remotely. And these provide us opportunities that are great when we're in person and we can still use them outside. And like, you can if use you them anyway. Quick, yeah. If you want a quick historical analogy, there was a time when I said, hey, you guys want to get coffee? And you would have thought Denny's or 7-Eleven. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. How'd that work out? Not well. Not well for 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah, we some other places. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the same thing in teaching. Yeah. Uh, Starbucks came from a thing that was a hundred years old in Italy. We just didn't know. So this is kind of the same thing. This works. We just didn't know. So it's just a matter of having your mind open enough to say, wow, that is actually better. I'm going to give that a shot. Yay. Yay. Right. Well, thank you again for joining everybody. We will see you tomorrow. If you're joining Georgina on the kickstarting a GEG. Yay. <laughs>